we are going to be reviewing the mob armor add-on. This is created by Mazario Studios. This add-on will cost you 830 Minecraft coins, which translates to £4.19. It's roughly $5. This add-on sits with a 4.5 star rating out of 5, with over 160 ratings so far, and 76% of those giving it a 5 star. There are over 20 different armors the players are able to craft, all representing mobs in the game. All of the armors in today's video can be applied to pre-existing or brand new survival worlds, and some of these armors even come with custom animations. Before we check out every single armor set that is available within this add-on, as you would expect, it does come with a guide book. This is the mob armor guide. Welcome to the tutorial book of the mob armor add-on. Here, you'll find the basics of all of the armors. In order to craft the armor, you'll need the key item of each armor and a mob essence bottle. For example, gunpowder is the key item and mob essence to make the creeper armor. This item right here is the mob essence, and here is the crafting recipe on how to obtain it. This is going to be the key ingredients for every single armor. Now, the guidebook does explain how to craft it. I just think it's a lot easier to grab the item, head inside the crafting table, and just do it this way. Because as you can see, it's a lot easier to learn the recipes. How to craft the armor. Each armor is crafted like the Minecraft vanilla ones with the addition of the mob essence. And then it explains how to do it. But let me just explain all of these again inside of the crafting table. So let's say you wanted to make yourself the creeper armor. Again, the ingredients will be different because creeper would be gunpowder. And you wanted to make yourself a chest plate. You need to include the essence right at the top. And we can get started straight away here. This is the axolotl one. The axolotl one requires raw cards and, of course, the mob essence. So inside of here, you can see the specific recipes in order to do it. With boots, it's regular, but essence goes to the top. Chest plates, it's the recipe, but the essence goes to the top. And, of course, the helmet goes in the middle. And, of course, the leggings also go in the middle. It's the same as vanilla with the addition of this extra item. So, here is the list of the key ingredients needed. I'm not going to read these to you. They're kind of self-explanatory. Like, panda requires bamboo, skeleton requires bone, spider string, villager emerald, etc. Every single armor in this game comes with its own special abilities, but also an armor type which can be low, medium, or high, and even a durability factor. And just like you, I was in fact curious. Can you go ahead and enchant these armors? I'm currently in survival. Let's put these inside of there. So yes, you can apply pre-existing enchantments from Minecraft to your armors, which I think is a pretty cool addition. It's just vanilla armors massively enhanced. Starting with our axolotl armor. The special ability of this one is it gives you water breathing. Now, in order to access the special abilities, I believe you have to have all of the armor complete. You can't just have a chest plate, a helmet, etc. Now, I've just noticed the really cool particles that this actually produces. That's a nice addition right there. The durability of this isn't that fantastic, but I gotta see how this actually works when you're inside of the water. Aha! Okay, so this one has like a special one. Not only does it give you the pretty much infinite water breathing, but we've ended up with speed five. And it looks like this can only be applied to the player once they're inside of the water. Now, these effects are instant. As soon as you touch water, you are super, super fast. As soon as you get out of this, you can see it kind of disappears. In fact, if you, like, jump in the air a little bit, you can kind of see it glitching out straight away. I just wanted to appreciate the B armor. Not only are they very detailed on the front, but check out the back. And you can actually see that the wings are slightly moving, and it even comes with its very own stinger. So let's check this one out, shall we? Let's get this one on. Let's see what the particles look like with this one. So this one doesn't actually come with any particles. And we don't have any effects straight away. But if we do open the book and read the details behind this, it says the B armor gives you protection to fall damage 
as well as poisoning the enemy when getting attacked. Note, not all mobs are affected by poison. Armor, medium, and durability is also medium. So let's do forward slash TP, and then we did 100, and we TP there. It actually gives you a feather falling effect. It'd be pretty nice to see this actually be applied but also the wings flap a little bit more. It's meant to inflict some kind of poison, but that doesn't seem to be happening, even if I am the player attacking this. And you guys will clearly see that I have all the armor on. So I'm not quite sure on how to inflict some kind of poison here. I even went ahead and tried to attack something such as a non-hostile mob, like a cow or a pig, and that didn't seem to work very well. So... I'm not quite sure how to activate the poison attributes. Next on our list is the blaze armor, even giving you the same kind of effect that they have. Let's grab all of this, see how cool this looks on the player, see if it gives me any kind of special attributes. Now, I've just taken the B1s off, and it's instantly giving me fire uh, resistance. Oh, oh, check that out. If you wanted to take a hot bath in survival, you can now do it with this one. You have fire resistance too forever as long as you have this armor on. But remember, take one off and that ability is gone straight away. It would have been nice to give this like fire aspect. So when you punch a mob, it instantly sets them on fire. That way you wouldn't have to have it on the likes of your bow or in fact your sword. Here is your chicken armor. Now, you think this is just going to be something like feather falling, because that's what I thought it was going to be. You actually end up with an egg. Now, the description behind this actually provides something when you're crouching. So if you go to the next page, it says, gives you resistance to fall damage, as well as a special ability. Special ability, sneak to receive speed. A speed boost can only be used each 15 seconds. So while it's on cooldown... We can then crouch and we end up with a very, very temporary speed boost. Of course, obviously, if you hit a chicken, they run away incredibly fast. But you also end up with an egg. Probably the armor all players want to check out. This is the Ender Dragon armor, and it looks very, very impressive. Yo, look what this looks like when it's on me. Not only that, though, check out how cool it looks there. So this one also... Seems to give me feather falling. But what else is available with this one? It says Ender Dragon armor gives you the ability to fly, look up to go up, and look down to go down. High armor and very high durability. As simple as looking up in order to take off. Now, it's not kind of like an elytra flight. It's like you're in creative. That's probably the best way I can describe this. I actually think they should have done it with the Elytra way, considering you have wings and you kind of have to go and visit the Ender Dragon in order to get access to wings. Now, this is apparently very, very high. So how does it do against Fire Res? Not amazing. Let's do forward slash summon. Let's do a Ravager, for example, here. How strong are you against the Ravager? No. Although it seems to be very, very strong. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess that's one way to avoid getting attacked by mobs, right? Like, you want to get me, bro? I don't think so. Goodbye. And just get yourself over here. You can move relatively fast, at least. Is he coming? Bro, he's coming up. He is coming up. I'm just going to eat a second. And then we're going to go up. And then we're going to come back down to him. Only thing is... Oh, dude. he, he Yeah, he's still pretty strong. Yep, probably something I would not be messing around with. So even though the armor is meant to be strong, it's not strong enough to completely defeat this guy. The Enderman armor. I believe this gives you a speed boost as well as a special ability. If you crouch, you will teleport to a different location. I think this would be really, really good for trolling with your friends. And this one seriously gives me Minecraft story mode vibes. Glow Squid, this gives you, I think it's permanent night vision, right? Yes, permanent night vision and also water breathing. There is no special ability with this one if you are crouching, but let's just double check. I wonder if we go even faster as well when we're inside of water. 
No, so it's not quite like the axolotl one. I do love the particles coming off this when you're swimming. So you would have the ability to just swim underwater forever. Go down into deep caverns like this. Go and find all your diamonds without any concern. As expected, the iron golem practically gives you resistance. And you're big and bulky and strong just like an iron golem. But if I do forward slash summon iron golem myself and I attack him. I mean, you're somewhat strong, but are you strong enough to actually bring him down before he brings you down? I don't think so. So I think some of these armors could have been buffed a little bit more, especially the likes of the Ender Dragon one. I think obtaining the Ender Dragon one was relatively easy because that one's just with, done with Eye of Enders. The Iron Golem one does require, uh, this one does require blocks of iron. I, I don't know. I just think some of them are a little bit too easy to obtain and even though this does have the resistance too, it's not necessarily super strong. I like the skeleton armor though, because you do 25% more damage to enemies when using your arrows. So I'm just messing around with a couple of iron golems here and you can see how much more powerful your bow and arrow becomes. I have power five on this. Two arrows, three arrows, and I think four arrows is enough to bring down an iron golem. So in terms of strength, I think the skeleton one is even better than the likes of the ender dragon one. This one should have just done like bursts of like dragon breath around players. Also, I feel like this one, I don't know, I feel more like a ghost than a skeleton. The panda one is quite cute. When you have the panda active, you do have slowness three, but as a positive, you end up with regeneration two. The spider texture looks very, very good. If you're scared of spiders, this one is incredibly creepy. Now let's see what this does before we go ahead and read anything. Now this one would have been cool for like being at a scale walls. Like, just go up them like a ladder, for example, or vines. Instead, it just offers you a jump boost, which to me doesn't seem to be relating very well to what the actual kind of spiders can do. I mean, I guess unless you're aiming for it to be towards a jumping spider, most spiders don't jump. Not quite sure what's going on with this one. I look like I'm balding. I have no eyes available and the nose is in my mouth like a tongue. But as expected, you end up with Hero of the Villager. I think the Warden armor is going to make or break the decision on if people want to buy this. Now, if you have all of the armor active, you'll end up with Slowness 2 and Strength 3. And I think that's it. The sad thing is there are free add-ons out there on mcpedl.com that do a much better job on the likes of the Warden armor but also on the likes of the Ender Dragon armor. These armors look incredible, but they're very, very underwhelming. I don't think we've missed any special abilities with this. So this only has, gives you strength effects, but you'll move slower. Like in order to obtain this, you need to go and get yourself some Echo Shards. Now these aren't exactly easy to obtain. You have to go to a deep dark and an ancient city. I just feel like the effects could have been done so much better. The best armors, the likes of the Ender Dragon and this one, just they need a little bit more. All the other armors, which are much easier to make, seem to be so much better. What about zombie armor? Do you burn in daylight? You just end up with a slowness effect. Is that it? Is that all this one does? Let's check this one. The enemy will receive damage when attacking you. You'll also move slower. So we do forward slash summon something like a husk. It begins to attack me, for example. It also takes damage. It's more or less like an advanced version of thorns, which then brings me on to an even bigger question. If I was to go forward slash enchant at P and we do thorns three on this, on this, on this, and then we do it on this as well and we have like some relatively strong thorns armor active here and we summon another one of these and we get attacked by it can you ca how, how many hits does it take until it dies surely this is meant to like multiply it right i mean he's not dying i'm still i mean he died eventually but uh yeah Again, underwhelming. Let's see what life is like as a slime. Now, I'm not disputing. The textures look really cool, but ugh, generic. It's just really generic. This one should have like summoned a slime block or something when you had all the necessary ingredients. But 
I don't think this one also comes with any special abilities. The special abilities usually seem to be activated when you crouch. And this one just gives you the ability to jump high. So this is what I'm talking about. The witch armor is great. Gives you a special ability. Special ability sneak to do an area magic attack. Can only be done every 15 seconds. So we'll go over towards where this chicken is. And we'll do it now. And as you can see, do you see what I mean? Do you see what the big difference is? Some of them have been done really, really well, but others just haven't. I feel like they're missing special attributes. This is kind of what I was expecting from all of these. Like, I gotta... There you go, dude. It even shows you a custom animation as well. I can't believe it took me this long to find one that I could go, yeah, that's really cool. Gast gives you resistance to fall damage. We've seen this three or four times today. That's all you could come up with. Again, disappointing. So this one is full turtle armor. What I will say about this one is it's used with scoots. So the turtle scoots now have an additional use. This one's going to make me like armor resistance, right? Surely. No. Crouch. Ah, yes. There you go. You end. Oh. Oh, now that's cool. See, this one's pretty cool. You end up as an actual turtle trying to protect yourself. I need to do forward slash summon an iron golem here. I need to attack him and then do this. Aha! That's what I'm talking about. See what I mean? That one I really like. That is cool. Oh, okay, but yeah, once you come out of the shell, yeah, you're definitely vulnerable. The piglin armor gives you saturation effect to reduce hunger. Instead of me having to eat constant food, this one is just going to heal my hunger on its own, which I guess is a very beneficial effect if you're going on a long journey. And then we have the creeper one. I saved this for last because this one creates some form of TNT explosion. If you crouch, it summons TNT, which will of course explode. Now, I believe this one is a limited time use as well. It says happens every 15 seconds and just gives you special abilities and that's it. But I am curious though, if we do this and it explodes, how, sh yeah, <laughs> you don't stand a chance at all. Now, I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. I'm greatly disappointed. I love the textures. They are incredible. But the effects and what the armors can do are very, very underwhelming. I don't think this add-on is worth $6. I think it would be great to collect them all and add them to custom survival worlds just because they look awesome in a Minecraft world. But unfortunately for me, out of five stars, I would give this a three star at best.